Hello, everybody, and welcome to Shinjuku. Nishi Shinjuku, I should say. This is a public toilet, the newest one in the Tokyo Toilet Project. It is unusual and pretty awesome. It doesn't fit in at all, it seems, to this neighborhood, but yet it totally does. The shape of it is long, almost like a toilet bowl, and you see the place to wash your hands is right there. We're gonna try it all out. Let me just pan around so you get an idea of this area. How you doing, everybody? So, um, actually, the Park Hyatt Hotel for Tokyo is just over there. That's where they had the Lost in Translation movie, if you remember that, with uh, Bill Murray, Scarlett Johansson. Very iconic movie of Japan, and it's, it's kind of interesting that they would put this right here. Um, they're always looking for spots to renovate the public toilets of Shibuya-ku. So I'm guessing this is in Shinjuku? I'm not sure. All I know is that this is a pretty stunning uh, toilet. Now these faucets here will actually work. There's more than one. Look at this. Is this not the weirdest thing? They all work. I guess it depends on your height. And it runs a river that goes down into the center there, which will collect all the water. I guess if your hands are really dirty, you're really going to mess up this, this uh, system. All right, let's take a quick look inside, and I want to show you where this is exactly on the map. It is so clean, and they do a really good job of, of doing so. Public restrooms in Japan are always like that. Look at that. The light turned on automatically, and this toilet automatically started to uh, clean itself when I walked in there. There's a sensor in there. All of the buttons and dials, you would not expect this in a public toilet and in many countries, they would probably be broken and I don't know why, just uh, people that are angry with life. But we don't have that here. It's so, these public toilets are pretty clean and, and usable and that's one of the weird things. I'm not gonna show you the ladies room because I don't want to get arrested, but if I did, I could do it in passing. All right, I feel d dirty now. <laughs> Toilet! Oh man. Only John would bring you a live stream from a public toilet in a city. All right, where exactly is, <laughs> where exactly is this spot here? So I, I uh, made a little map here to give you an idea. So you can see the, the tall buildings here. That is uh, the park. World Park Hyatt, part of, that might even be part of the Tokyo Metropolitan Building, I'm not really sure. The Park Hyatt is uh, just right there by where the highway bends around. So, yeah, that's, that's uh, where I am right now. I think I got a better map. Hold on a second. Oh, I do, I do. So this is Shinjuku down here. You can see the really tall skyscrapers. Um, as we pan around, there's some parks. So Shinjuku does have green areas. There's the to Tokyo Metropolitan Building on the top now, just going out of, out of uh, screen. It's not far from the station. And it's uh, right where the highway bends around there. It's beautiful. There's on the left side, the Tokyo Metropolitan Building. Free observation deck. You get really beautiful views of uh, Mount Fuji from up there. You can, depending on the weather. And there's a, you see on the left side, that big green area, that's Meiji Jingu, Meiji Shrine. So you could walk there to here, and that's where we are. It was under construction when they, they actually uh, made this map. So it's finished now. Let me see what else we got. I, I want to show, oh, look at this. This is a, this is a multi-purpose bathroom here. Let's open it up and we can take a look inside. Wow. Wow, it's, it auto-cleaned right there. So it's got soap, it's got, um, I, what do you call it? Um, the people with bags that need to have them washed out. I, I can't remember the name of it, but you can do that here. That's what that, that's for, um, which is great. There's a baby changer, so if you have a child, you can change diapers. 
Um, everything is just super clean, lots of space, so you can come in here with a wheelchair, which is great, and it turns off and self-cleans in a way. Somebody has left some trash there, but they three times a day will clean this restroom. Here you've got a map that breaks it all down, men's toilet, women's toilet, accessible toilet, which is this one right here. Wow, which is bigger than the other toilets combined. And on the other side, I guess the men's urinals is quite a lot of space. There's three in there. And then here's the sink, which is so unique, isn't it? It's so unique. Now, the creator of this is a Sol Fujimoto. You can see his name is written right here. And uh, I like from the architect's mouth, let's, let's just read this, vessels and fountains. I believe that a, a Tokyo that a public toilet is an urban watering place, a fountain in the city. We propose a public hand-washing facility that is open to not only those who use the restroom, but also to a wide variety of people with different purposes. The toilet acts as a single large vessel for everyone's use. The shape of the facility with its large concave center is the result of incorporating hand-washing stations of various heights. That's why it is intended to create a small community of people from children to elderly to gather around the vessel to wash their hands, drinking water and engage in conversation. We would like to propose a new type of public space where people can gather and communicate around water. I love that. So the question is, can you drink it? And the answer is, yes. Tokyo's water is drinkable. What do you do? Tokyo's water is drinkable anywhere. It might taste a little bit like city water, but it's water. You won't get sick from it. This is cool. Now, I've, I've actually gotten to know this Tokyo Toilet Project quite well. I was on a TV show just a couple of weeks ago where I brought this up as one of the, the new attractions of Tokyo. This started around the pandemic when the Olympics were coming and a lot of tourists could not go to these toilets. I can't think of another place in the world that does it like this. And when the country reopened, I noticed that people would come here and, and take pictures of it. And I made this video really quickly just to give you an overview of some of them that I've been to. Uh, this is the, the clear glass toilets in Yoyogi Park. Um, not far from NHK, where I, I would sometimes go into the studio there for uh, TV shoots. I walked across the park one day a few years ago, and uh, yeah, there you go. You can see inside of the toilet, thus it's transparent and super clean. And everyone can see you doing your business, unless you lock it. So make sure you lock the door, and then the panels freeze over, and you can't see inside anymore. You can see how like, kids are playing, and if you're not careful, they're gonna see you doing your business. Now, there was always, I, I'd never heard of anybody that had something go wrong with them, okay? So, that's okay. Here's another tour that I did about, about four months ago, which is really cool. It's got this old style to it that's made of, it's a copper roof on there, but I like the wide open door, and uh, I don't show, I'll show you if you look at the live stream at the inside of it, but it's really nicely done. This is underneath a highway. And this is the one designed by Kengo Kuma in uh, uh, Shiba Nabe Park, I think it is. It's about a 10 minute walk from Hachiko Scramble. So it's not that far away. And it's a kind of, you walk away from the Don Quixote and the Tokyo Honten uh, department store and you're here. It's basically like walking around in a forest. That's the way I felt. And of course the toilets are clean. I, I'm guessing that Kengo Kuma wanted to give that impression that you're walking in a forest among all of these public toilets. If you see what was there, Google Maps has some of the pictures from five years ago, and you can see it wasn't a very inspiring toilet. Do toilets need to be inspiring? In Tokyo, they kind of do. And I'm kind of happy that they are. I'm kind of happy that they are. They didn't, so Blue, they didn't um, get rid of the toilets at Yogi Park, but there was some maintenance problems. They are, one of them was broken. So they were uh, trying to fix that. I believe it's fixed now, but um, yeah, that's one where I think maybe if people play with it too much. So just, just remember, these are, there's electronics in there. Don't bang the stuff. Make sure that they, they, make sure that they uh, last at least 
for years. You treat it as though it were something in your own home. And I think that that's what a lot of people here in Japan do with the public toilets. They treat it, what if there's a glitch? I mean like a, a little bloop. I, I don't think that that would ever happen. I haven't heard of that ever happening. And it's been around for at least four years now, three or four years now. So that's hundreds. Yeah, colostomy bag. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Tamara. Tamara, thank you. Yeah, and the uh, crazy ideas don't stop there. There are dozens of toilets. I think there are dozens. There's, there's one that I went to recently in front of Ebisu Station, JR, which is on the Yamanote line. That one is pretty neat. It's, it's very designer. Um, I don't think it, it's as extraordinary as this one, but it's still pretty, pretty amazing. There's, uh, where, is it? where did I see a couple of them? I think you just walk around Shibuya Ku, get lost, you'll stumble like around two or three of them. But it's all listed on their website, which I actually have right here, I think. Yeah. Like, I was, I was wondering, like, who cleans this? And they actually have a team of people who will do that. Uh, it says here, the public toilets stand the test of time in addition to our focus of designing impressive facilities. They are. We at the Tokyo Toilet believe that providing, they like say that with pride, we at the Tokyo Toilet, comfortable experience through cleaning and maintenance that's equally important. That's right. You can build a toilet, but then the maintenance and cleaning start. And that's important. That's very important. So the Shibuya City Government and the Shibuya Tourism Associations are working together. I love the fact that they created this because it, it, it really is a tourist attraction um, for me, anyways. I'm, I'm freaking here. I'm standing in front of a, of a toilet. Right? I'll take some of your questions here because I think it's a, I think it's a fascinating thing. Good job, mate. How you doing? Good. All the way from Waz. Oh, really? Keep awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Well, that was nice from Australia. So you can see that the opaques were not fully opaque. They were opaque. You can't see inside of there. I'm taking some questions here from you. Oh, Jakarta has a toilet in Indonesia, I'm reading here. Are there toilet, uh, Tokyo Toilet Project tours? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. If they did have tours, I would take it. I'm actually, yeah. All right, I, I, can't, t I can't say any more than that, but possibly there could be an episode about this coming soon on the main channel, so. <laughs> could be more information coming, you know me and Japanese toilets. That's not a, a wonderful thing to say. I, you know, you're looking at, you, you can see in this video, they have like uniforms. There's a lot of pride with this project and I think it is run by, this, by the uh, city government. So, I mean, the uniforms that they have, I've seen them come in and clean and they're happy about their job. And this is something that I've really noticed about um, people who work in Japan. They do their job and they're very competent at it and they're happy to do it and they do it the best that they can do it. And I tell young people, if you start off with a humble job and you can't do that job the best that you could do it and better than other people, how are you gonna be successful in life if you can't clean a toilet well? That's it, I always, if I had an interview, I would, I would have a dirty toilet and say, I want you to clean this toilet well because I wanna see how much pride you take in your work. To me, because I'm a bachelor and I had to clean my own toilet. It is a humbling experience and you want it to be clean and you do a good job at it because it's your freaking toilet. So I think the same kind of thing applies to any work that you do. And I have a video on the edited channel where I talk about, you can see the cleaning schedule here. Here's the uniforms that they have, look at that. It's amazing. I wonder if you could buy these online. Walk around, I'd walk around, well I wouldn't walk around town with that. But. You can see they're just screen recordings from the website. Uh, you check out the website because I, I think uh, they'll lay out the history of each of these toilets. And that's kind of cool. See, I kind of want to, I was waiting for this truck to get out of the way, but they, they seem to like to, to park right in front of the toilet, which makes a lot of sense. This might be one of the nicest, most beautiful toilets in Tokyo. 
How often do bachelors clean the toilet? Hey, this one cleaned it almost every day. It was almost like a ritual. After every use, keep the toilet as clean as though you would want it in your own home. And it was in my home, so I... All right, maybe not every day, but almost every day. Carrie, you can come and use our toilet anytime. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the amount of cash some of these YouTube clowns splash around just convinces me money nowadays is worthless. I need to pay off my mortgage and well, look, I think I don't I don't even this has nothing to do with the toilet, but if they splash around cash and they're making entertainment, is it any different than television shows? It's called an investment, and if you put in money into your content, people are going to watch it, thus it has value. Thus it can't be really, it can be compared in a way to any other job. That's my response. If you don't invest in your own work, then heck. That's how Mr. Beast does it. You can make that money back pretty quickly because people want to know. And if you invest poorly and you do it on a topic that nobody wants to watch, you're going to lose quite a bit of money. So it works both ways. There's high risk and high reward. I mean, let me put it to you like this, all right? I'm, I'm flying to Hawaii on uh, June 11th to 14th to film an episode. It might be the most expensive episode because I have to fly to Hawaii to film it, but it's, a, it's an idea that I had that I believe is something nobody has done before yet and I want to cover this topic and it's connected to Japan so that's what I'm going to do and then I'll get a chance to meet with everybody in Hawaii but I gotta spend money in order to do it that means I gotta stay at Waikiki at, the, at almost the, the sort of cheapest hotel that they have it's not a resort it's, none of the hotels seem that bad although I, I haven't ever been to Waikiki but it's all part of I see Michael Sasano is here hey Michael <laughs> Rondania but that, that's all part of it, you know? And, and what am I filming? You'll see it soon. But it's not something that's very expensive. But the travel to get there is. Thank you, Patreon. You're gonna love this episode. It's gonna, I think you're gonna love this episode. It's hard for me not to get like images of Jack Lord and the Hawaii Five Own song. Hey, Craig Kawaguchi from Maui's here. Hey, Craig. I don't know if you can make it to Oahu, but I don't have time to make it to Maui. You're going to have to bring that beautiful Maui to us if you, if you have time on the 11th and 14th, and we'll find some time to do a meet up here. I'm panning one more time across the, the uh, toilet. We will definitely do a meet up. Uh, Rondania, Michael, everybody, if you guys know of a good place to have a meet up and a time that would work, uh, send it to me. I probably will see it on Patreon, but you can try Instagram mail, I guess because I'm, I'm looking for a place. I can't just do it in a place where parking is like $30 an hour or something in Waikiki, it's crazy. Don't forget Magnum PI, yes. I didn't watch that as much as Hawaii Five-O. I don't know why, it just wasn't syndicated uh, back in the 80s. I think it was because it was still on primetime TV. Did the sinks water the tree? That's a good question. Um, all right, it is a real tree. It is a real tree. You know, I don't think so. I think it, it could. I am right now. Give it a little bit of a drink here. It's not much. Let's give it to the roots that might be around here. It's going to rain, I think, later today. But you can definitely drink it, and it's clean. I wish they... You know, the one thing that I think is... is um, that could, that would be cool usage of the excess water. Well, the one thing that I worry about is that you do have to touch the handle. And if the, the handle is nasty, then you're getting that on your hands. And you can't use the same hand to drink from. It would have been nice if they were auto. But then I could see pigeons coming. Can you imagine that? If these are auto, and then the pigeons would come and they figured it out, and they would, they'd learn how to, to drink from the water at any time. There'd be just pigeon poo all over the place. Maybe that was one of the things that was in their mind when they created this, do you think? 
because I want to tell you something. I'm just going to tell you. The crows here are freaking smart. So are the pigeons. They learn. They learn. The crows would definitely be, look, they're already coming. Do you see that? Look at them. I've just given them knowledge and they're standing there. You don't have thumbs. You can't open that. You can't open the spigot. Hey, I see you. Pick up a But bottom line, and there's the lines are really beautiful on this thing. It's a pretty it's a pretty incredible toilet. It's a pretty incredible toilet. I could see myself spending half a day here getting work done. But I think, you know, it's a public toilet and you Oh, did you hear it? It operates the... It help, It operates the self-cleaning unit. And then you have, to, you have to close it and then it locks. It's a smart toilet. Um, Mr. Strength, that would show weakness. I'm not gonna drop a deuce in there. Come on. This is a live stream. Everybody can see what you're writing. This stuff follows you through the rest of your life. That's what they say. Nishisando is where you'll find it. I already pinned this in the description, but there's a map right here. So yeah, if you want to find it, you can just go to the description of this video and you'll, you'll find a, a, a Google map. Or come out of Shinjuku Station, which is right here. I was on the uh, Oedo line, I think, and uh, walk straight until you get to here. This is the uh, Park Hyatt Tokyo. So it's just across the street at the Nishisando Gucci of the uh, Tokyo Highway. You are here. It's a true story. All right. <laughs> Any questions? Do they have a bus tour? Do they have a, a bus tour to all the bathrooms? No. You know how you know you know would be the worst job in the world to be the bus driver of that bus tour. You have to announce that you're pulling up to a public restroom every five minutes because it's in Shibuya Ku, and it's pretty amazing. Okay, no, they not, that, that's one bus driver job. No bus driver would want that job. Not even these guys here. So, the gym is a little shaky. So I'm gonna walk back with you a little bit towards uh, Shinjuku Station. So there you go. Bye-bye uh, toilet from all of us at Only in Japan Go. Click the subscribe button. And uh, we'll, we'll visit another toilet because I've got a pretty good idea that they're gonna keep, up, keep, keep on coming up with these ideas. Now, if you stop and say hi to me, you're entitled to a you found me card. And and some people did not did not ask for them, so that's they did not get one. No, this um Park Hyatt Hotel, it reminds me so much of the late 90s, early noughties, is that what they say? The early zeros. Like the design of them, and you'll see this design all across uh, Japan. This is what Japan looked like when I first came to Japan. Like Kansai Airport kind of has this look to it as well. And every time I watch the movie um, Lost in Translation, it, it reminds me of my first five years in Japan. That movie came out in 2003, I think, so it was around there. I came in 1998, so the aesthetics has, has changed quite a bit in the way they design buildings, but it was pretty, it's very nostalgic for me to see that movie because that was the Japan that I came into, and the, that's when they built that hotel that they were staying at. I think that movie is uh, $4.99 on the iTunes uh, store. <laughs> I actually bought it, so. I can re reference it every now and then.
It is a nice hotel, though it might be the second most expensive hotel after the Amman, which we did, um, we kind of looked at uh, a couple weeks ago with the hotel's prices and uh, quality around Tokyo Station. I'll probably do another one of that for Shinjuku in the next couple of weeks. If you guys like it, let me know. That episode was pretty interesting. Um, I don't think as many people saw that one because I'd done something similar in the past, but uh, it, it, when people ask me, can you recommend a hotel to stay at in Tokyo? My answer is I live here, thus I don't actually know from my first hand knowledge because I, I have not stayed here in a hotel, just a couple of them, and it was mostly for work. Like they would say, would you like to stay in a hotel? And I said, does that include breakfast? And they said, okay, yeah, sure. Because everybody loves a good hotel breakfast. That is the Dokomo Tower in Shinjuku. Look at that. I think they were renovating. Yeah, they are. You see on the left side, they're renovating the clock. And that building was built when I was here, around 95 to 98, I believe. It's a nice building. I remember how it looked really cool, very New York City-esque. And this almost looks like uh, the Louvre in, in uh, Paris. Japan borrows quite heavily from abroad, I think, in some of the designs. Tokyo Station itself on the Maranouchi side is designed after Central Station in Amsterdam. And you can really see that if you put them side to side. It's not exactly the same, but it borrows quite a bit where it's noticeable. That's the new Kimpton Hotel, part of the IHG chain. So if you're a member of that, you get use your points there. It's kind of pricey, but they've got a garden up there. This is what the public toilet looks like at night. That's really cool. So it's the brightest thing in the area. And I guess it's good for security too, because you can see the suspicious people around there because you're just illuminated from the toilet. I can see the police. How did you catch the, the criminal? I saw him in the glow of the toilet. Public toilet, because <laughs> it was so bright. Ah, I love it. I love Tokyo in that way. It's so cool. It's always evolving. And right around the toilet, you have things like this. Check it out. Now, this is an amazing tree. I'm sure there's a story behind it. Look at this. This is a good reason why you get lost in, in just walk around. So this tree used to be a lot bigger. I guess it get hit by lightning or something. It's 300 years old. So that means this tree survived. Well, the wind has really picked up. This tree has survived the fire bombing of 1945 where nearly everything was destroyed. Um, this area wasn't as bad as the area down by the Sumida River. But you can see that is a, that is a pretty powerful looking tree. You might even see some scarring. Um, see, the wind, is, the wind is really picked up here. On some of these older trees, especially down by Samita River, if you find them, you, you will see some scarring from the fires. Some of them uh, did make it. Uh, Yoyogi Sanchome. Wow, the wind is strong. Okay, I'm gonna get out of here. But it's really cool. You just walk around, the, you see a little corner shrine. That's why getting lost in Tokyo is really cool. You know, I, how many times have I walked around? I walk around Tokyo quite a bit. J Jason, that's a lucky tree. That's not it's, a, it's still alive. I don't know what kind it is. I walk around Tokyo all the time and I see something that looks like a cafe or a restaurant. I was like, well, look at that trendy, awesome looking restaurant. And it turns out to be a hair salon all the time. I said, boy, that, I wish it was a restaurant. They would serve, it looks like they serve some pretty good food, but it's not, it's a, it's a hair salon. Tokyo has too many hair salons. I don't know how they stay in business. That's why they have to charge $60 for a haircut. Although this, this place charges 1,700 yen. It's called the convenience cut room. Let's 
go super wide. I think it's a great idea if you do come to Tokyo to explore the toilets. <laughs> that sounds so stupid to say. But from the moment I landed... Hey Michael, it's 12 p.m. in Japan. Pick up something to eat. You got it, buddy. I'm, I can smell the curry. I think I just passed an, an Indian restaurant right there. Oh, that smells so good. I, I might be doing a U-turn. Oh, man. Yeah, the moment I arrived at Narita Airport in, in uh, that was the second time I, th I think I came in. I came in through Kansai Airport, I should say, yeah. I remember using the public restrooms there and it was so clean. It had washlets and stuff, spray coming out. I'd been on a, like a 14-hour like a flight, right, coming over from the east coast of the U.S. And you get to Japan, and the first thing you didn't want to do is not use a... Whoa! Is he drifting? First thing you want to do is get out of that plane and use a decent restroom that's not 50,000 feet in the sky. And I was surprised, in, in another country, you're very hesitant to use it. I'd say the U.S.'s public toilets might be some of the worst in the world. <laughs> That's just like, uh, I've, I've traveled to half of the countries around the world, a lot of third world countries, so to speak, and they, uh, some of them are cleaner than the ones that I've seen in the U.S. And they're safer, too. But in Japan, public toilets are uh, well cleaned because those that are those that are using them often make sure that it is cleaner than they they try to leave it cleaner than they, they found it. You remember the Japanese were cleaning the, the stadiums at, at the World Cup in Rio, and then again uh, last year they like to clean the area, keep the area cleaner than they found it. And then the people who clean the toilets they still clean the toilets. So you, what you do is you get a toilet that's sometimes cleaner than the one in your home. And although I did clean my toilet pretty well, I still would sometimes go, I was in a very small apartment. Is this a TMI? I was in a very small apartment. I literally, to use the toilet, I had to put one foot in the bathtub. It's, it's a very un awkward feeling. All right, let's cross the street. I think I can take you. take you by the government building. I think there's a dead spot in the signal. I had to put one leg into the toilet, into the bathtub, which was empty, in order to use it because it was a tiny 1K in Futako Tamagawa, which is a very uh, trendy area of the city. It wasn't so much back then. It was still pretty trendy back then. I think it was um, a like $1,000 a month for, I don't know, it was like 18 square meters or something. The bed was one of those, um, uh, uh, fold-out beds from the wall. Murphy bed, I think you'd call them. But instead of going the, the long way, it went the side way. So you could, you could put it away and then you pull it down if you wanted a sofa. Doubled as that. But I would walk across the street to the department store, which was about 100 meters away with a newspaper under my arm and the, the staff all knew me. And I would sometimes, you know, it's called my second home. If anyone ever asked, I said, you can come and use my toilet anytime. Boy, I love the architecture of the government, the metropolitan building. That's part of it there. Wow. So this side of Shinjuku has changed uh, quite a bit. During the pandemic, we saw a lot of the businesses being replaced, going out of business, new businesses coming. Oh, I remember the last time I was here. Yeah, Tocho. City Hall, or the Metropolitan Hall, because Tokyo is not actually a city. There are 23 cities and many towns within the city something people sometimes don't get. So it's Tokyo Metropolitan Government. 
not Tokyo City government. Interesting, huh? Bet you didn't know that. Some people say, what is the greatest city in the world? And they say, it's Tokyo. They'd be wrong, in, technically, because Tokyo is a metropolitan area. I live in one of the cities within Tokyo called Chuo, which kind of means center. The most beautiful toilet I've ever used in Tokyo, probably Wako department store on the top floor where they sell the jewelry. I went in there and it was gold. I don't think a lot of people know about that. You could actually use that toilet. Don't tell them that I sent you. In fact, just forget about me. If you go up there and use it, I do not exist. You're on your own, all right? I don't want to be associated with you going up there to use a department store toilet. <laughs> I might get in trouble. I don't know. I don't want any trouble with Wako department store. It's Ginza. It's a very powerful place. Very powerful. It's so quiet. This is supposed to be a bustling area of the city and it's so quiet. So the, I think the Keio Plaza Hotel, which is one, one that a lot of people stay at, is right here, right? Is that the one right here to the right, coming up, the white one? I can't remember. I, I just remember that they had a great view of this building you're seeing on the left side. Look at that. That's right, Mr. Tortorapoco. A, a, a luxurious toilet is very conducive. Hey, bitrate, I told you to forget about it. I'm not here. You're on your own. You should make t-shirts so when you visit Japan, it says only in Japan sent me here. Everyone can blame me for your behavior. I will not make that t-shirt. It's not a bad t-shirt though. Yeah, this is one of the coolest buildings and it was built you know, I remember, did anybody see that um, Karate Kid Cobra Kai? Or was it in one of the movies where Daniel came back to Okinawa or something? And they put a big sign that said Tokyo on this. Like they CG'd it in there. And it was the most tackiest thing I'd ever seen. But up there are two observation decks. I think each one of those is an observation deck. And it's one of the best views. It's free because it is the city hall. You can see the bigger windows. And you have amazing views all the way to Tokyo, uh, to Fu Mount Fuji, but maybe not today, because it's a little bit, a little bit cloudy. Let's go down here. For anyone who's joining us, we have finished our tour of the toilets. It was, it was a pretty good tour. You can see this is what it looked like uh, from the outside. We were there just about 10 minutes ago and you can watch it in the playback. All toilets should look like this. Very clean, isn't it? Here's the, the guy's side. No, I did not go in the lady's side. Place for hand washing. And then the sinks. These are really cool. You turn them on and all the water flows into the center there. And that last one, you can spray it onto the tree to give it some water if you're feeling but the designs, the lines of it, I really wonder what it looks like in five years. Does, does it grow mold? Does it stay this white? It's part of the maintenance. But I like the fact that they keep it white because white, white is the color that is clean and you know it's clean because you can see it. And smell it. And now we're in Shinjuku and we're heading back to, to, to Shinjuku Station. So you can see, See, it's not very far to get back to Shinjuku Station. I'm kind of walking through the heart of it now. And I think we have about three minutes to go.
This is the last week coming up to get that Godzilla meets Mario postcard in the postcard club from Shinjuku. I believe they've already changed the poster, so that is very limited. I'm not sure what we're going to do with the next postcards, but you know, this is kind of cool. Like, I could see this being a postcard. For me, anyways. These are the public, public telephones, which you just don't see anywhere anymore. And the first four years that I came to Japan, I used these phones all the time. Look at the way it slides out. I think this is really retro. You see this here? I'd plug my computer in here, dial up American Line in the US, I think Hawaii or something, and I'd download my mail. And when I, I replied, I would come back and upload it via this <laughs> public telephones. Only Japan had something like that. I can't remember at the time anyways. And then the US, I believe some of the ones in, in New York might have had the, those ports, but. But they are dinosaurs. To see green one next to a gray one. And then they had these orange ones, which are quote unquote international phones that required a different card. You can get the telephone cards, even to this day, you can still get them inside of the 7-Eleven, which is interesting. People collected those telephone cards. If anybody was in Japan before 2005 about, you had a telephone card because that's how you would call, mostly. And each, each card had a, a unique design of uh, Japan. And you could pick, usually the, the um, convenience store would open up a book and they'd have a, about a hundred of them, different, different designs and you could collect them. And I have a collection of about 30 of them. No Little is here. All you gotta do is go to patreon.com slash only in Japan. One word, postcard club. And I've been sending new signups um, two postcards <laughs> to say thank you for signing up. So if you sign up uh, this last week, I'll send you this month's and last month's to say thank you. I've got about 10 Godzilla postcards left. Shinjuku Godzilla. Thank you, Apple Bob. There it is. Rainer Loves Japan writes in here, Australian toilets are disgusting. Really? I, I, yeah, you know what? I think, I can't remember. Yeah, I, it was pretty disgusting, you're right. I remember they, I went to a club in Sydney and it was a trough, they had this trough. They didn't even separate the urinals, it was just a trough and dudes would walk up to the trough and one club, there was a guy and he laid inside there and it was the creepiest thing I'd ever, I'd never seen that anywhere else. I guess he was that drunk. Well, I was in my mid-twenties, so it was, that's something I would probably see ever again. Because I, I haven't been to a club in a long time. All right, this is a part of Shinjuku that I just love. This is very retro. The more you travel, the more you see some pretty outrageous things. This kind of has a throwback to the old Showa era, even today, although some of the buildings have been renovated. If Urban is here, we're gonna go past map camera, buddy. It's a good place to get used camera equipment, but um, this used to have a place, a lake called Yodobashi, and they, they took uh, the Yodo, and the Yodobashi camera took the name of the location pre-World War II, actually pre-Meiji era, I think. And that's what this, air, this area used to be. There's the Shinjuku postcards where I sent, I sent the postcards here for those that signed up before. I took uh, several hundred postcards and sent it from upstairs there. And they put a Shinjuku postmark on it. It's the one that Godzilla destroys every time he comes to Tokyo. He's making so much money from advertisements here. He's everywhere. He's the Seiko map, Seiko guy. And here's map camera, the place where you would get 
really good used cameras, and I've sold some equipment here before. They wanted too little for my 12 to 24 2.8 G Master lens, so I ended up not selling it at all. It's still there, although I rarely use it because it's too big. If you got to sell stuff, everyone's going to Medikaru. You can actually send it off at convenience stores. It's so convenient. Wow. Yeah, this is one area that's changed. The Sega has changed to Gigo. It just feels different. All right, well, we'll walk over here. I want to say thank you, everybody, for watching. This has been fun and informative, enlightening. I didn't actually use the toilet as you can't do that in a live stream, but I can tell you the flush is majestic and it's a nice place to go and check out, take some pictures of, because I don't think you will, it's a, life is about a series of experiences, right? I, I think you all or everyone's going there. It's not what, buying things, I think. It's about experiencing things, feeling. And when you go to a place like that on the city street, a public toilet is actually something that gives you a feeling when you see it. It's like art and it's free. <laughs> and it's a Shinjuku and that's kind of cool. Just like the view that we're about to see. Joshua, we're talking about uh, public toilets. This is one of my favorite scenes, especially at night after it's rained. These are neon lights and they stick with the old stuff. At least I don't think they've changed it to LED yet. And the neon lights will, will glow on the wet streets. So if you're at night and it's rained and you say, oh man, there's nothing to do tonight, come out here and you'll see an amazing scene, a throwback to like the 1950s, 60s, and 70s and 80s where neon lights ruled Japan and they no longer do, which is sad. It's a pretty cool photo because you have the Metropolitan Building uh, right there in the distance. Pretty cool. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, I found some mistakes in the video on the ch cherry blossom tree, but I, I fixed it all. I want to say thank you for those that pointed it out to me. I'm uploading that today. It's going up today, uh, Sunday, so you get a chance to watch it. It's about a little bit over 10 minutes, and it's the most beautiful tree in the world. At least I think so. When you watch it, you can disagree. That's what the comments are for. All right, everybody. Matane.